this guy just gets me wild <laughs> up. It is absolutely a joke. I obviously can't go back to bed now because I'm pissed talking about Phil Jones, but this guy is an absolute joke. Hi guys, welcome to Full Time Devils. I'm Adam McCullough. Today we are joined on Skype by Jay, Marty, John, Shin and the Edgars, Carl and Emma have joined us as well. Um, make sure you're checking out all their channels and social medias, which will be in the description below. This is the Astana preview. What time's kick off in this game? Like midday or something? It's absolutely Ten. ridiculous. Ten. What? Sorry, it's 10 to 4. I thought you were asking. <laughs> I was going to say it's 10 to 4, isn't it? The kickoff. Yeah, is that, is that 10 to 4? John, what time is it for you? Uh, it's like it's like ass crack of dawn or something. I don't know. I'm like your mum when I phone you when you're on holiday, isn't it? What time is it there? No, anyway, let's carry on. We're talking about Astana against Manchester United in the Europa League. United are already through in the group, but top spot is not yet confirmed. So a victory and AZ Outman not doing the same would mean we finish top of the group. But AZ are likely to win and United are likely to travel with a team that consists of a lot of the youth players. What do you guys think about this? Do you want to see a fully young side um, or do you just want to see us get the group wrapped up? Uh, I'll come to you first, Jay. Um, I'd like to see a young side, to be honest with you. I know, yeah, you want to get the group wrapped up and God knows we could do with some, uh, we could do with a, an emphatic win or at least a win away from home. They've been in short supply. But I think this is a game that's crying out for, for the kids to be given a, a chance. And we've seen what it can do as well. You know, you saw Brandon Williams when he played against Partizan. He just grew in confidence and that he, he took that confidence into the Premier League. And I think that's what can happen with some of the younger lads. I know we're going to get onto the predicted 11 in a little while, but if, we, if, we, if we're seeing the likes of maybe Levitt or... Uh, Ghana, um, those types of players playing, then and they do well. I think then that will give him encouragement, and that will show Ollie that okay, it's a different sort of standard from the Premier League. But at least they're getting that that match experience. We used to see it years ago, didn't we, with the Class United Two, where they'd have games in Europe, especially many years ago when we had the the free foreigner rule, and it used to just sort of help them get ready for the Premier League. So I think it, it's crying out to play the youngsters, give them a chance, let them show what they can do, and I think as well the fans who. I'm feeling a little bit deflated, a lot of us, after the weekend's result against Sheffield United. It's easier to get behind a, a young team. It's easier to get a lift as well when you're getting behind a, the youngsters. So, yeah, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer for me for all. I think if he plays the youngsters, he, he can't lose. Well, can I just say, by the way, there's a serious lack of smiles on this Skype chat. <laughs> John, you with us? Yes, sir. Is your alarm gone off yet? You yeah, I'm up. I'm good. I'm good. Why, Is anyone going to be walking in the background, John? Not today. I locked that shit. I locked that door. Nobody's coming in. <laughs> John, uh, what do you think about the team? Just, just in, I'm just in an effort to try and keep you awake because we know it's early where you are right now. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, what, Anytime. what do you think um, about this game? How do you want to see us approach it in terms of the face of the squad and uh, and the youth and also of it? I mean, ideally speaking, uh, these are the kind of games where you're going to give your youth a chance. I mean, like like Jay mentioned, you know, we, we're strong favorites to move. I mean, like sorry, like you mentioned, we're strong favorites to move on. And um, Astana, with all due respect, aren't the toughest of opposition. So this would be a perfect scenario for our youth to sort of come on without too much pressure and to try and wrap this uh, this group stage up. Uh, but at the same time. We as a squad cannot speak in ideals. We as a squad can I speak in in perfect scenarios right now because we're a shambles and we're all over the place. We're injury ridden. We have players that are old that are that are trash. We have players that are that are young that are good. We have old players that are good. We're, we're all over the place. So I think age is a little bit sort of. It's not the best modifier in terms of trying to select your squad. But with that being said, you know you can right off the you know right off the top talk about. Your your front players rather being being the sort of young youthful squad that you can pick for selection. So I mean we're obviously going to talk about selection later on in the video, but uh, I, I definitely think this is a good opportunity for those sort of youngsters, especially in that front line, to come out and and, and get some good experience and good game time. Um, cheers, John. Um, Emma, I'll come to you first. Um, do you think there's any of the of the players that we haven't really got to see much of that that should be coming into this game because we saw against the uh, who did we play last? I've already forgotten. Sheffield United. That we we opted to go with an extra defender rather than play James Garner, maybe. Uh, do you think someone like James Garner could be coming into this team or is it too early for them? Uh, no, I've literally put him in my starting team. I think he he needs to be... It's the perfect game for him to prove what he can do mm. um, in the midfield. Um, with, with the... 
the, the young team. Um, I do agree with Jay what you were saying about we need to have the youngers playing. But if you think back to when we played them in September, we did struggle with them. Um, they are a defensively good team. Um, so I think we we missed a lot of chances there. I think so. I think when Mata and was it Lingard come on um, about seventieth minute, I think the whole dynamic changed just for that bit of experience put into the team. You know, we we had less touches on the ball. We yeah. were switching play. So I think we just need to have yeah have the young players, but just have maybe one or two experienced players. Uh, yeah. Um, Just showed the way a bit. They, they made an impact when they came off the bench against Sheffield United. Um, Carl, is that something that may be playing Ali's mind in terms of do you maybe save them for the Premier League game or is this the perfect opportunity for the likes of Greenwood, Gomez maybe to even get a chance? Yeah, no, I've just, I've literally, I know we were talking before we, we started recording about the travelling squad. I've literally found it in the Daily Mail online. Oh God, it's oh, the Daily Mail. Bloody oh, cow. Has it got um, David Beckham in it? And right, yeah, don't, yeah, don't. We not quote me on this. Do not quote me on this, but it's the only one I could find, so it's probably made up. But there's not one first teamer in it. So there's no none of the likes of even Rashford, Martial, or Lingard, or no, 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 no. no I think you read in the top bit of that. I right, call Carl. Where it just uh, says yeah, United, United, United squad. yeah, squad for Astana. Yeah, but then if you go scroll down, is it not? Have a debate more. between yourself, lads. Don't worry. <laughs> nah. that's just that's just the youngsters that are highlighted that are going. There are right. experienced players going as well. Okay. So, right. so does someone want to read out the full squad? Jay. Jay, if you've got it, read it out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Actually, get that ready for when we do predicted 11s. Um, yeah, yeah. Because what I want to ask John about right now is, um, can we do a Jose 2.0? And I don't mean that video that Steve once made. Um, or the one that was edited up of him. Um, does the Europa matter more because of the chance um, of top four looking increasingly on light, John? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, if you're only going to social, you're sitting there, you're, you're, the media is chewing you up, you're, you're, your fan base is divided, everybody's talking about Ole in, Ole out. I mean, if you're sitting there thinking about what the future of, of Manchester United holds for you as a manager, this game potentially and the game after and the game after could really really continue to mount on pressure if things don't go well uh, i mean you know we're looking at astana the europa league is all but set but let's say hypothetically speaking things don't work out and 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 for some reason uh azad akmar doesn't get a result and just things continue to turn sour if you're only going to solskjaer that's an absolute living walking nightmare so you're going to want to try and maximize whatever opportunity you can get to try and potentially get something better for next season. And Champions League would be an absolute icing on the cake after a disastrous or sort of nightmare season. So uh, Europa League is definitely something that he should definitely take priority into. I think Jose 2.0, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, this group stage is just about wrapped up. Uh, when we go into the knockout stages, Oleg is going to really want to assess the squad, really assess the situation and make sure that... Uh, uh, make sure that Europa League is definitely going to become a priority going forward. Um, Edgar's Eva, one can answer first, but both chip in. Um, do you think you know the Europa League should be our number one priority this season then? Because yeah. we've seen yeah, the cool. inconsistency. Like, how many league wins is it now? Three or four? Like, there's not not many in the league. Most of our good performances and good wins have come in the cups. Yeah, I think it's got to be more a priority than, obviously, I wouldn't say more than the Premier League, but we're not having the best it's, of time in the Premier League, are we? It's so. very unlikely that we are going to get top four, so we need to put our priorities in Europa. Yeah, no, yeah, 100%. 100%. Like you say, if you win it, if you, if you finish... Is it winnable seven, with this squad, though, do you think? If, if you, not the if one you that's travelling. If you manage it hold. right... If you manage it right, I guess it depends. It dep it also, it's all going to depend on the on the fixture congestion, isn't it? If you, you're going, you might have to leave some like your Rashford and Martial, maybe leave them out of a Premier League game to make sure they're fresh for an Europa League game. But that's just going to boil piss, isn't it? But <laughs> I, if, if, with the with the squad depth we've got, and he wants and he wants to go and win it, then it's probably the only option. Mm, I, don't, I don't know, like it, because it's, when it's you look them, at the squad it? that won it in was it seventeen. 17, 18, yeah, yeah. whatever it was. Um, when you look at that squad, um, it had obviously the likes of, uh, you know, Mkhitaryan was in decent form, Pogba was in good form, Zlatan uh, was in good form. Like they had a lot of experienced players playing well. Whereas if you look at this team, Pogba's not in it. 
Um, you know, the, de the defensively, it's a bit, <laughs> bit shaky. Jay, what do you reckon? I think if Ole prioritises Europa League, he'll get sacked, basically, because I don't think he can afford to rest players or, or focus on the Cups. I think if we lose to like Sebastian Villa in the, in the league on, um, on a weekend, he's already under pressure. And I think he has to get his. He has to win his league game. Do you think game. he's under pressure if he loses this game, or does because I think we're through? He can probably kinda... get away with it if he plays the youngsters because we're through. It's like people will probably take it on the chin. I think if he goes into Sunday's game and he doesn't play a full strength team because he's rested some for the cup game or moving, you know, further down the line, if he starts doing that, I don't think he'll survive it. I don't because we know he's under pressure already with the whole Pochettino thing, with the league form being as it is. We, you know, we were talking on it about the other week. You know, if you're going week in, week out to watch league games and the form's rubbish, and every once a month you're winning a cup game, it's not good enough. The fans will turn on you for that. So I think I think you have to play your strongest team in the league. And the, the sad thing is, we haven't got a strong enough squad to play. You know, you mentioned 2017 and and um, Jose focusing on the Europa League, but Jose had the advantage of he won the league cup, so he already had that in the bag as a sort of I've won a trophy. And I'm going for another one. And people sort of gave him a little bit of leeway there. Oli's under a lot more pressure. And I think, you know, if we go into sort of the next round of the Europa League and we're in the bottom half of the table, I don't know how he survives that. Can you honest. imagine the Mourinho FC faction of the United fan base at the moment <laughs> if Oli won a Europa League? I think their heads would fall off. Like, just, it, it'd be <laughs> yeah, but uh, Jay, actually, just to, just to add there, um, I think in that situation in 2017, uh, uh, right after we won the League Cup and fans were starting to discuss whether or not we wanted to prioritize the Europa League or the league, I think we were sitting a little bit more in between uh, with Manchester United potentially making the top four. So I think fans were like, no, 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 let's focus on the league. No, 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 let's focus on the Europa League. Whereas here, mm -hmm. We're almost kind of certain that top four is almost an, uh, uh, you know almost out of reach. So I think in this case it's a bit more difficult, a uh, different as opposed to 2017. Um, I get just, what you're saying. I just can't see. I don't see how Ole can survive poor league form. That's my only issue. Oh no, it? no, without a doubt. I remember I that season as well with Jose. Like because he won the league cup in in March or February, whenever it was back in the February beginning of March. He had that cushion. I was the first manager to win a trophy in my first season. So. <laughs> Even if, like, because I remember at times, every time someone else around was to drop points, we'd lose or draw. And every week in the league, it was just, <sighs> every week you'd just think, oh, for God's sake, this is annoying. And you kind of forgot about the good run in the Europa League. And you look at the Europa League, if Sao Vigo scored that, goal, that chance in the May, last minute, we, we, don't even, we don't even go to the, to, the, to, the, um, to the final. So it was very fine margins, but I do hear you. Anyway, we are going to go to predicted 11s now. Um, but before we do that, it's going to be a little ad break. Right, we'll do these 11s now then. Um... Right, yeah, don't, yeah, don't we quote agree? me on this. Do not quote me on this, but it's the only one I could find. So it's probably made up, but there's not one first team in it. All right, go on, reel it off. What? Um, Kova, Max Taylor, uh, is it Mengi, um, Bernard, Ethan Lade, Goldbraith. Um, Dylan Levitt, James Garner, um, Mella, R Rams, is it, R I can't pronounce it, Ram Ramzini. Ramzani. Ramazani. Ramazani. Yeah. Well, you got Chong, Gomez, Greenwood, like you got some, you say first teamers, they're still youngsters, they're still, so there's no, none of the likes of even Rashford, Martial or Lingard or... No, no, nope. no, that, no you're, I think you're reading the top bit of that article, Carl, where it just uh, says United, in the United, United squad. yeah, squad for Astana. Yeah, but then if you go scroll down, is it not... Have a debate More. between yourself, lads. Don't worry. <laughs> nah. that's, just, that's just the youngsters that are highlighted that are going. There are right, experienced players going as well. Just, that's just the youngsters that are highlighted that are going. There are right, experienced players going as well. What's your team? Uh, Romero in goal. Uh, Wan Bissaka, Maguire, Jones. I know, I know, I know, I know. He's, I know, but I think, I think that he's going to play in it. Put your foot down, um, man. And, Come on. And Brandon Williams. And then I've got Garner and Fred. And then James, Lingard, Rashford, Greenwood with Matt on the bench, I think, to come on and swap with Lingard. I think, I think that'd be... 
That's not actually just, a bad thing. Just wrap it up. Yeah. I reckon you might. I reckon you might end up seeing Laid. Maybe. Laid. And then possibly. Is it? Like do a, you think Rashford should be starting this game? I don't think. I. I, I no, he shouldn't. But well, I, I reckon he might because well, not from his performance wife says. in September when he kept missing it. I'd, but then I think he might redeem himself. But he's, but he's in the form of his life. At yeah, the that's minute, what so I mean. It's what, now, yeah. now, now he's playing the old Rashford, so. It's one of them, isn't it? It's it one of like them. Do you leave him out or do you, or, do you, or, do you, or do you keep him in to keep the momentum going? I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, it is a weird one because obviously he's in fantastic form. But if you like, imagine he gets injured and it's just like, for fuck's sake. Um, but, but, but then you've got to think that Ollie played Pogba at, at Rochdale, half injured, not fully fit. For 90 minutes. Uh, John, you're 11, please, all the way from uh, New York City. I, I, I completely forgot about Romero not being included in that uh, Sheffield squad, but I went for Romero anyway, so I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to go Romero and go. Uh, my back four, okay. I actually have a Young, Twan Zabi, and this is going to be a funny one. I think we're going to go Jones. I think we're going to stick with Jones and Luke Shaw. I mean, you guys know how I feel about Phil Jones. I think he's a travesty. Uh, and uh, <laughs> But if we're going to get through with this season, we have to salvage whatever we can get from him. And I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, <laughs> knowing him, he's going to want to try and play but him. Hang and on try a minute. Hang on a minute. This is, this is two teams now. <laughs> Three brains and two teams have picked Phil Jones. We have no choice. Why are we, we really picking players that have got other managers sacked? And I would ask that question to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well. Why are you relying on people that got other managers sacked? It's going to get you that's my, sacked. No, but that's my point precisely is we're giving extensions and we're continuing. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. We are in the, in the process of clearing Deadwood. But for me, Phil Jones was Deadwood number one. This is the wood that's like with got maggots inside. Shit is drying up. You just fucking use it as Deadwood in a bit. Like you could just use it as fire. This is the dead one you needed to get rid of. And I'm like fucking raising my voice here in the morning, but this guy just gets me wild <laughs> up. It is absolutely a joke. I obviously can't go back to bed now because I'm pissed talking about Phil Jones, but this guy is an absolute joke. But with that being said, given the current circumstances, given all the situation, given our squad, he is probably going to have to get game time because last game was was shocking. It was, it was disgusting. It almost made me vomit thinking about his performance. So why is but, he rewarded with another start? Jay, is he... Not a, uh, wait, you never finished a, your team? Go on. I didn't even finish. But this is the situation. <laughs> it's not a reward. It's not... You know, we're not picking him for reward. I think we're picking him to sort of help but him... Playing for Manchester salvage. United should be a reward. Of course. It should be course, fucking Adam. earned. Exactly. Not <laughs> given to knobs like Phil Jones. But unfortunately, knobs like Phil Jones are going to have to get game time nonetheless. So we're going to go with Phil Jones, and that's it. We'll talk about that for another time. But anyway, we've got Phil Jones, and I think Luke Shaw is going to probably play here. I think he's going to probably be able to get some game time because well, with Aston Villa coming up, you know you're going to want uh, uh, with the likes of Brandon Williams who's doing fantastic uh, to get some rest. We don't want to burn him out for a game like uh, this against Astana. But anyways, moving on, I'm going to go with Garner. With, I also think Matic is also definitely going to get game time here. I went Fred initially, but I switched it up. I think Matic is going to come back in. Fred has been uh, been more of the consistent players. He's been stepping up since uh, McSauce and uh, Paul oh, Grabben. So. Did you say Matic? Yeah, I think we're going with Matic. I think we're going to be able to play Matic. <laughs> I was about to do it's something you're going to regret in a minute. It's the same crap, the same scenario. I hate the fact that we're playing these players. I hate the fact that these players are being awarded for their bull crap, especially in matches talking all that bull crap on social media. But it is what it is. I, I really hope that once May comes, we just forget about this season. Can and I just I, say, and this isn't directly to you, John, because you, you've you never been that guy uh, to say those kind of things. But if Paul Pogba acted like Nemanja Matic has done, of the last 12 months, there'd be double Up page roll. spreads inside the sun. There'd be fucking United fans baying for blood every week. There'd be all sorts going on. And I just find it quite interesting, uh, to be honest. Uh, John, carry on with your That's just, that's because nobody cares about Matic. I mean, come on. Anyways, moving forward. But we uh, should care. Go. He's a fucking 30, what, 38 years old man or something. And he's, <laughs> he's supposed to be one of the most experienced players. He's probably, you know, mid to high range in terms of wages. He hasn't really played for United and he has been part of the issues over the last three, three years as, many, as much as any other player while he's been here. So why shouldn't he be held to account? Oh, that's a great point. I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. But right now we're all, we have so many problems. 
Matich is the least of our concerns, honestly. Honestly, if we have no problems and we're it's riding... Not because our midfield shit, John. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> John, it's not your fault, here. man. <laughs> if I had the answer, I wouldn't be sitting here. It's not your but fault, anyways, sorry, John. I'm going to finish this up. I got I got uh, Mata on the right with Lingard down the middle and Chong on the left with Greenwood up top. I think I, I, I definitely agree with Emma. I, I, I remember I went back and watched the game in September. Them coming on, Mata coming on, Lingard coming on really made things work because Rashford was really misfiring that that uh, that game. Um, but nonetheless, I think, you know, the forms have changed completely. Uh, Lingard and Mata have dipped and and, and Rashford has obviously uh, increased uh, went on a sort of like an upper trajectory with respect to his form. But nonetheless, I think this is the squad we're going to probably have to go with going forward, uh, given the fact that Aston Villa uh, is probably coming up and Jay's got a good point with respect to uh, not slipping up in the league. So that's probably my squad. True say. Jay? I just I just wish John wouldn't sit on the fence with Phil Jones so much, man. I just wish he'd tell us what he actually thought about Phil Jones for once. You know what I mean? Fuck, you know. Um, I've, gone, I've gone with... Right, listen. I want, I, I'm hasten to add, add this, Maka, before you start on me. This Phil is Jones. predicted, right? This isn't what I want. Sorry, this you is, know what? I, I've, I've forgotten my position in this in this presenting role, yeah. I'm yeah. supposed to just let you do your teams instead of sitting <laughs> oh, yeah. here scrutinising. I, cha- I was changing my team when you were shouting at them and I thought, no, I'm not doing it. I'm going to stick to <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a pussy and just go in the team that I pick. All right. let let's, let's, let's hear it, Jay. All right, mate. So this is my predicted 11, right? Not what I want, what I think will happen. So Lee Granting Jay's goal. Jay's preferred 11, Lee Granting goal. Yeah, Lee Granting goal. I love Lee Grant. <laughs> Us four, these stick together. I've gone with Ethan Laird, Jones, Rojo, and Young as a back four. I've gone Garner, Levitt, Matic in midfield, and I've gone Ramazani, Mason, and Marcus as my front three. That's it, man. Purely because, as I said earlier... Ramazani, Mason, and... Marcus. Is it, it was Gomez in your team? No, because I'm not sure what's going on with him. I would have picked him, but I think isn't there some issue with injury or a contract and it's all gone a bit weird. I don't know. He, I thought he was injured. That's why I never put yeah, him in. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's been injured. He's been in. in. He was in, he, I think he was in a travelling squad to Sheffield United, but all right, he's okay. been in and out of the team. He's been in and out of the 23. He's been a real real weird one with his contract situation up in the air as well. Um, hopefully this is a game where we start him, but... If he's fit, then yeah. If he's fit and there isn't an issue, then and probably I would. I've, I've just thrown Ramazani in there as a sort of a as a wild card. And what would you midfield? Not? Dylan Levitt, James Garner, and your mate Nemanja Matic. Again, <laughs> no, again, he's got legs around him at least. Predict exactly, and I think this is the thing that I was going back to earlier about we have to have our strongest possible team for for the Villa game. So yes okay I'd risk Marcus because I think he's on form and give him a game but other than that I think it's almost completely players that won't feature against um, against Aston Villa um, in terms of Hakuna Astana yeah is there any problems they can cause us John um, no to be honest with you like uh, they are they're a team that's it was only 1-0 finished... in the first game Yes, I mean, uh, I think Emma made a good point early on in the video. She mentioned that they're they're defensively sound, and you know, and while the quality might be lacking, they are the champions of Kazakhstan. I think they've been running for they've been running five consecutive league champ league titles, so they are a a, a side of class and, and quality. But uh, it, it, with respect to quality, compare in comparison to the rest of the Euro, rest of Europe, I'm not too sure. Um, that's obviously with you know, all the respect, but nonetheless, we we want to sh- we want to make sure that we're not going in there. Uh, you know, with an idea that like, let's just get this over with. That's 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 definitely. They lost five this. nil against yeah. Altmar, John. I'm six nil as well. Another like, yeah, but and the defensively sound. Yeah, but we're fucking Manchester United. I mean, come on, like we've fucking lost easier. We've won worse. Like we're, I, that's the thing. That's phrase. Like, we're Manchester United. That's used like, to wait, win us games. Like, that's the thing. We're and now it's reasons why we can't compete against the fucking John. Eleven used to be like me, Adam, Steve. And fucking Sam would sit here and we'd all pick the same 11. We'd all pick similar score lines. Now it's actually a game because we have no idea how the results are going to go. We have no idea who's going to fucking play. So it's interesting <laughs> in that sense. But, you know, we, you know, jokes aside, we want to make sure that we, we, we handle them professionally when we finish strong. Because we do have to prioritize uh, the league, obviously, because that's going to really get Ole sacked. I think Jay's spot on with that. But we also have to take into account the Europa League potentially could be what saves sort of like Ole's, you know, glamour in terms of what we, how we can finish the season and, and you know, and, and finish with the Champions League qualification. Jay, um, Astana, you impressed by them last time? 
Um, no, I thought I thought he did okay at Old Trafford, but I thought uh, Marcus had one of his worst games finishing wise. I've never seen him have. He missed about three or four sitters, which normally they're buried. And certainly now, in this, the form he's in now, I'd expect him to put them away. Um, as I was mentioned earlier, you know, they got Dix 11 0 on aggregate against Alkmaar. And I don't even rate Alkmaar that, that highly. And no Strong defence, eh? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. Um, well said. <laughs> um, I, don't, um, I don't know much about the Kazakhstan League, but I don't think it's very good. So um, this is a game, yeah. We should be beating these, even with our reserve team. I think I don't expect them to put on a performance. They're already out as well. So yeah, they might be up for it because it's a, a big European game for them against one of the biggest sides in the world. Despite the fact we're not very good anymore, so they'll put up a fight. But no matter what team we put out, I think we should be beating um, a team I've never even heard of before this season. Uh, Carl, Emma, uh, what do you think about Astana from when we last played them? Listen, right, I know, I know they lost like 5 nil to Altamar or 11 nil when I go or whatever, but everyone always plays well against us. Whether that's just us being shit or whether it's like teams just stepping up because they're playing Man United, I don't know. But they, were, they weren't they were that bad at Old Trafford. I, I found it, at Old Trafford, it was proven tighter than it should be. But then again, like like you said, Rashford was shite. Yeah. So it's, but it's it, one of them, it was isn't a it? combination of poor deliveries and lack of threat in the box. We had none of that. And we majorly, majorly lack creativity. Yeah, but so, on, the, on the flip side to that, we're going to win 7-0 now. <laughs> <laughs> With Phil Jones in the team? Seven. Phil Jones is going to get at trick, mate. <laughs> Chris Smalling scored last week, so he's going to score too. Watch. He scored at the weekend gonna and assisted. Gonna and he's going to he's gonna pull his shirt over it. He's gonna say, Can I just off, say, God. yeah, I know, Carl, you're not the only one to have said he's assisted, like, Every single sports page on Twitter and Facebook put Chris Smalling got a goal and an assist. Did anybody see the goal and the assist? No. Like the, the assist, he rolled it to someone who scored a screamer from long... Re- like, it was it was like giving Anderson the assist for Ronaldo's goal against Porto. It had <laughs> no part in the goal whatsoever. Like, it, it, it's, I you hate stats. Stats are ruining everything. You say that though, Maka, but Chucky always takes credit for Beckham's goal on the halfway line. See, it's like that. <laughs> Back then, someone would have come out and said McClare had a bad game today. And someone would have went, when he got he an assist. He, cla- <laughs> he claims that and he claims just the cannon our chip against Sunderland. He says those are the two best assists he's ever done. They are, to be fair. They're, they're up there in history. Um, but, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Um, John, did you do Oppo? Did you talk about Astana? Do you care yeah, about did. Astana? We did. I was the first one to talk about him. But <laughs> <laughs> Phil Jones has got fucking Macca's head completely Wait. fried. I have got Phil Jones' face and a head. Um, listen, what's the score going to be? You've, Carl, you've already said 7-0, but I kind of feel like you were joking. No, no, it's legit that. <laughs> to Astana? No, no. I reckon, I reckon I'm going to go with, I'm gonna think, I reckon we'll go strong 3-0. Oh, I was thinking that, yeah, 3-0. 2-3-0. Three nil. Three nil. Yeah. Three nil. Yeah. Uh, John. Uh, I'm gonna go two nil here. I think we'll be able to push a two nil. Uh, how can you pick Phil Jones in your defence and say we're gonna get a clean sheet? That doesn't make <laughs> any sense to me. Because I've sorry, sat, he- I've sat that's, here. That's, you know I what, fair you, you're picking him and predicted, but you, you think what, he's Jack? gonna give us a clean sheet? Well, as we're talking about Phil Jones, I just, I don't know, I had a, like, like a, a moment where I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see a, a no-context Manchester United clip of us talking trash about Phil Jones and he just has a master class. So, I don't know. I just know we're going to be able to, I think we're going to be able to come away with either a 1-0 or a 2-0 victory. One great man once said he was the next <laughs> Duncan Edwards. And another great man once said he'd be United and England captain. <laughs> <laughs> Phil fucking Jones, man. Uh, it may still happen, because while he's here, we may get relegated and he might be our t- captain. So, uh, Never you know. Know. Um, Jay, score prediction? Um, unlike the others, I don't have much faith in Phil Jones <laughs> and Lee Grant or whoever's in goal getting us a clean sheet. So I'm going to go... I'll go three two United. I'll go for a win, but three two. Three two. Yeah, maybe the kids will turn up and get a few goals. I've got a feeling we're going to play the kids. The kids are going to have no fear. They're going to tear these lot apart. They've not got the whole novelty of playing at Old Trafford. Um, the weather's a bit cold, but you know, so is Manchester. It's going to be five nil to Manchester United. <laughs> Mason Greenwood's going to score a hat trick. Uh, right. 
Martial off the bench. And uh, James Garner, edge of the box. Naming the scorers as well, Deflected man. Reflected effort, 5 0 Manchester United. And then we're going to win the Europa League. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching Full Time Devils. Thank you for tuning in, everyone at home. Thank you to these guys for joining us. Jay, John, and of course, Carl and Emma as well. Thank you for joining us. You can subscribe to their channels in the links below. John and Carl and Emma have got their own channel. It's the United Family and John Shin's channel. Help John Shin be the biggest John Shin on YouTube and help Full Time Devils as well by hitting that subscribe button. Um, don't slip. <laughs>